Okay, so let's start off with the theorem and then look at the examples. So the theorem basically says that the vertex chromatic number of a subgraph is less than or equal to the vertex chromatic number of the original graph. Now, this is going to come in useful when you eventually have like way complicated, way huge graphs. Because once you have like the more complicated graphs, if you can find a subgraph in it, you can at least, you know, determine what the boundary, what it has to at least, you know, the boundary levels for the chromatic number. So the chromatic number will have to be greater than or equal to whatever the subgraph's chromatic number is. So you look for very specific subgraphs of chromatic coloring that you already know, and chromatic numberings that you already know of. So you look for like, does it have a complete graph inside of it kind of a situation? Or, because if it has a complete graph inside of it, if you have to look at this situation, you can be like, okay, well, that can be red. And then you're like, that can be green. And then you're like, can this one here be green? No, because it is adjacent, so it has to be blue. Then you're like, okay, but can that one be blue? And you're like, no, because it's connected. So that can have, that has to be another color. So you're like, well, if you have a complete graph, Okay, four, it has, you know, a four coloring, and it has chi equal to four, because everything is attached, because um, everything is adjacent to every, every other vertex in the graph, the chi number is four. So now you, if you can find this, chilling in another graph, basically, so you have another graph like this, for example. I'm trying to make it really obvious that it's a subgraph of it. You know this bigger graph, chi is greater than or equal to 4 because it has k4 as a subgraph. So you know that in there, no matter how you do it, there has to be at least four colors in that particular subgraph, which means that in your larger graph, there must be at least four colors. So that is something that's useful to understand or useful to think about and look at. So again, the vertex chromatic number of a subgraph is less than or equal to the vertex chromatic number of the original graph. So when you look at a giant graph and it looks very complicated, try and look for subgraphs in it that you know, you're know you familiar with or comfortable with. If you can find their chromatic number, you then at least have what the minimum chromatic number of that large graph could possibly be.